Welcome to this video on exercise and dieting, this particular topic. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you can discover a lot of hopefully interesting topics to you across the spectrum from physiology of exercise to nutrition, uh, even some um, mindset uh, issues that you might encounter as an athlete or even you losing weight. Again, a lot of different topics. I encourage you to subscribe uh, to my channel. It's an ever-growing list of videos and, and again, information that I think we'll find useful and help wade through the minutia that's out there of data when it comes to the field of exercise <clears throat> and um, nutrition science. So topic today, <clears throat> you may be wondering what Mr. Miyagi is doing back there. He usually is in most of my videos. It's pretty fantastic. So um, right over the belt squat too uh, as extra motivation. But today's topic is lean mass. And it's like, well, that sounds like a pretty cool topic. Uh, but I'm talking about lean mass more in the line with weight loss uh, in, you know, weight loss in general, uh, if you're just trying to lose weight, but also thinking about athletics as well. Uh, many times when people do a tapering strategy, or they're trying to make weight for a weight class sport. Um, the issue is not so much that they're losing weight, but the kind of weight they're losing. And certainly <clears throat> if you have to make weight for a sport, um, ensuring that you can make weight in order to compete is very, very important but doing so in such a way that preserves as much lean mass as possible is gonna be critical. So first of all, what is lean mass? And <clears throat> lean mass is not just muscle mass. We can also um, incorporate muscle glycogen uh, in lean mass as one of the major components, um, but it's anything that isn't bone uh, and that isn't body water uh, and that isn't, of course, body fat. Uh, of, you know, of, of the lean mass categories, the two that we're gonna be most interested are, of course, muscle mass and muscle glycogen, and I'll explain that in just a minute here. All right, so I think it goes without saying that losing muscle mass as part of our lean mass is not a good idea. That's a, the engines of our movement. Uh, and so, um, you know, if you're an athlete and you want to uh, be on the top of your performance, then making sure that you don't lose any lean mass as you lose weight or a, as you're competing or training for a competition is gonna be critical in order to maintain your level of performance that you um, are looking to achieve. And so when we think about dieting then, and just diet in general, um, ensuring lean mass is preserved is absolutely critical. Uh, keep in mind that muscle mass is preserved in two different ways, primarily. And we're talking about legal things here. I'm not talking about illegal, illegal things. That's a different um, you know, set of variables or a different variable, I should say. Uh, when we're talking about a clean athlete, you have to think about the two things that really accumulate uh, or contribute to muscle uh, accrual or muscle preservation um, or accretion, whatever you want to say, it's muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. And so synthesis is kind of like a gross muscle, uh, you know, money in the bank. Okay. So if you have a paycheck, that's your gross amount that you make. Um, you have to subtract out expenses though. And that's our muscle protein breakdown. And what you get left over is net. Now, if you have more expenses than you have gross, then you have a situation where you could be losing muscle mass. Um, in a very simplistic sense, muscle protein synthesis is best accumulated through weight training, exercise in general, but weight training is certainly the most efficient because the muscle protein breakdown may not be as high, um, and through eating protein. Okay, again, through legal, these are legal ways to do that. Anabolic steroids is its own deal. Muscle protein breakdown is more sensitive, even though there's some, a few research studies that may, uh, may say or support this idea that's not as important as we think there. I think there's enough data and just general understanding human physiology to say that it does matter in, um, to manage cortisol levels. And the way you manage cortisol levels is through eating carbohydrates, okay? And so you can already see maybe where I'm going with this uh, video. Lean mass preservation and lean mass building is gonna be very difficult to do if you're not eating enough food, enough protein and carbohydrates, and then not eating carbohydrates at all like some of these macro emission diets are, that carbohydrates are evil. Okay, and so when we think about just general um, muscle mass preservation, that's very, very important. If we think about lean mass now and muscle glycogen levels, and what is muscle glycogen if you're unsure? When you eat something that has glucose in it, particularly, um, that's glucose is one of our three main um, simple carbohydrates. Glucose is gonna get stored in the muscles and get stored in the liver too. Those are two main depots for it, in other places as well, but these are two main depots. Uh, in the muscle as glycogen. So, you know, it basically makes these beautiful looking uh, 
little ferns in your in your muscles, for lack of a better term. We're stringing all these glucose molecules together for later use. And just by the location of these molecules, they make them um, more readily burn during exercise, especially high intensity exercise, just because they're already on board in the muscle, they're in the bloodstream, not to be pulled in, they're already there and ready to be used. So if you're an athlete and you're not replenishing your muscle glycogen, uh, or your muscle glycogen is low because you haven't been eating carbohydrates, then you can expect your performance to suffer. Uh, if you are losing weight and you are doing it through uh, omitting carbohydrates, you can expect your exercise performance to suffer. Ketone bodies have been promoted as this uh, ideal fuel for the body. And the reason that um, it's been discussed is because the central nervous system runs off two main fuel sources, one carbohydrates, what's it really likes, and two are ketone bodies. And I put up a, video, a picture a while back on my Instagram feed, I think exemplifies this idea though, is that you have this big monster truck and you put the big tires on that thing, that's the carbohydrates, it runs really great. But you can put these little bitty tires on that uh, monster truck as well, and it will run, but not real well. It's not really up to its full potential. So why not just eat the carbs? You're missing out on being able to work out harder. So there's this idea that we just have this scarcity mindset that, well, I'm just going to cut my carbohydrates, and that was what caused me to lose weight. Well, you just created a caloric deficit, so you will lose weight. The problem is, is that now you've cut your source of muscle glycogen repletion. And so when you go to exercise again, you're gonna feel worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. You're basically doing the beginnings of a really nice carb loading cycle. Uh, and if you ingest some carbohydrates at a high level, you'll probably feel fantastic for about three or four days, like better than you've ever felt in a long time. One, because you feel like garbage because you're living off of ketones, and two, because you just ramped up your muscle glycogen and the body as always, always overreacts to um, situations, so it runs into extremes. If you went one extreme to the other, it goes the other way. So if you're like an endurance athlete and you can tolerate uh, cutting your carbohydrates a couple days out completely and just eroding your muscle glycogen down nothing you probably will get a fantastic storage of muscle glycogen before event now the, the downside is during that time period before the ex before the event you're going to feel like garbage so you have to decide if you're willing to go through that misery and or your training is set up in a way to accomplish what you still want to in terms of training performance while you're feeling terrible before you do that so that's really how you do an effective carb load <clears throat> most effective carb load all right so what does this all mean then when we just talk about dieting in terms of losing weight? Well, I think it goes without saying, and I've kind of already alluded to this, if you want to lose weight, you need to preserve lean mass, okay? Both, both in terms of muscle glycogen, so you can exercise harder, burn more calories. So yeah, like, well, I'm gonna eat some carbs, that's like 150 calories, that's 250 calories or whatever. Yeah, but you may burn 400 calories more between the session and the aftermath of the session, epoch, uh, as a result of investing. So if you invest a little money, you get more back, right? Instead of just saying, well, I'm just gonna go in there with no money uh, and die, right? And feel like crap and so only burn 250 calories when I could have burned double that and put in an extra 100 calories before to do it and feel great in the process and feel great tomorrow when I go to exercise again, instead of accruing this fatigue and getting a deeper, deeper hole. So carbs are fine. Remember, it's the quality of the carbohydrate, just like any of these macros that matters. You can have bad protein sources and good protein sources or better protein sources. You could have lower quality carbs. You could have higher car carbohydrates for your uh, particular purpose. Sugar is even fine if used at the right time. Uh, so we don't need to demonize every single, you know, uh, demonize the whole macro group. Uh, it's kind of like saying all, you know, a group of people is bad based on two people. We would never do that. That's a terrible idea. Some people do that, but that's not a good idea. That's not fair to the rest of the group of people just because you're characterizing the whole group by two people. When there's, a, you know, 4.5 million people uh, that are not like that, okay? And so we do the same thing with macros for some reason. Um, we just like to demonize the whole group. So if you're losing weight, preserve lean mass, muscle glycogen. Preserve muscle mass too. And the reason is what's often not talked about when it comes to weight loss is weight maintenance. The whole point of losing weight is to keep it off. Like it's great to look good for a couple weeks or months, but then what? Many people don't have a plan after they lose weight. So have a plan. The plan is lose weight in such a way you preserve lean mass. Uh, and that includes muscle mass. The reason is muscle mass is more metabolically active tissue. And so when you do anything, walk across the street and you have either preserved lean mass or even built a little bit of lean mass, you're gonna burn more calories. And that's gonna, again, be very helpful when you're trying to keep the weight off, and especially after you had this enormous weight loss, perhaps, uh, your body's gonna wanna go back to that old set point, okay? We know that the body tends to cool down uh, as you lose weight. And some of that, I think in these research studies, is simply because people have lost lean mass. So if you can maintain your lean mass and, or then immediately start to build it up muscle mass in particular is what I'm talking about now, 
you should have an easier time maintaining your calories in, calories out, and, and making sure that you can hold that new body weight that you've hit, assuming that you haven't lost too much weight and it's not realistic. If on the other side, though, you've lost a lot of lean mass, you lose you know, 10 pounds and three pounds of it with lean mass, yeah, you lost some body fat, but you're also setting yourself up to have an, a really quick rebound once you start to eat carbohydrates again and they're starting to be stored. Or if you've lost a lot of lean mass, even if you're eating carbs and you weren't eating enough protein uh, or the timing was bad or you're inconsistent in your calorie intake, you can expect that you're going to have a harder time holding that uh, new body weight and uh, the composition of your body is going to be different now. And so you could regain some weight perhaps and you've lost maybe over time that three pounds, you maybe get two of it back, but you lost a pound of lean mass, but now you regain the fat plus some weight. Now you could even weigh the same and be in worse shape than you were before because your body composition is a much poorer state. You have more body fat than you did before. So save the lean mass. I can't implore you enough when you're looking at these diets, is lean mass gonna be preserved? And to do it, you need to lift weights, okay? If you don't do it through lifting weights, you need to make sure that you have a ton of protein intake, a ton being the ranges that are reasonable, of course, all the way up to two grams per kilogram of body weight. Uh, and then carbohydrate intake, and make sure at least that the carbohydrate intake is meaningful in terms of its timing. So right after a workout, blunt that cortisol response. Eat breakfast, I don't care what Dr. Oz says, okay? Eat breakfast. There's a stack of research to support the importance of breakfast for most people, okay? Uh, and so, you know, do these things that'll help preserve muscle mass, especially during weight loss. If you're an athlete and you're tapering for an event, so you have a week taper before your powerlifting meet, your combat sport meet, uh, or a combat sport event, uh, or a weightlifting meet, or whatever it may be, again, the same idea is to preserve lean mass. Now, it's not like you're going to lose, a t uh, you know, eight pounds of muscle mass in one week, but you are going to start to lose muscle glycogen if you're not careful. And so using things like a, in, under the supervision of somebody knows what the heck they're doing, be very careful with this, all kinds of disclaimers that can throw you about water cuts um, and losing body water. Those are much better approaches to losing weight than just dragging calories down because then you lose muscle glycogen. So yeah, you made weight. And if you're in a sport like weightlifting where you two hours later, you have to compete, um, you made weight, but you also just shot your muscle glycogen. And it's going to be very difficult for you to replace that muscle glycogen now and go out there on the, on the platform and compete, especially if the, if the cut was quite significant. Okay. So when we're looking at losing weight, both in, over time, maybe in just a general weight loss strategy, it could be an athletic strategy, or it could be um, just, you need to get some weight off or you want to look better or whatever it is. Make sure that you're preserving plenty of protein all the way up to that two uh, gram per kilogram level and make sure you get plenty of carbohydrate, a general rule for you know a good training day that's not just all cardio focused is roughly one gram per uh, kilogram of body weight, okay? So that should give you some general guidelines um, you know, in terms of where to start, how much should I be eating, and then pile those carbs up around your workouts before, uh, have some crappy sugar carbs during, and then have some more carbohydrates, healthy carb, what we call it an RP, uh, afterward a complex carbohydrate. Okay, if you need more help with that, contact me and we can talk about um, RP diet, which is nothing fancy in its approach. It's just a great way to get organized in terms of eating real food. Um, and that's the important piece here. So I would, I would highly recommend you, know, you take a step back and look at how you may be losing weight. And if you're setting yourself up for long-term success, both in, uh, for those long-term weight loss strategies, once you get the weight off, and or if you're looking at a competition situation, are you setting yourself up for success or are you just losing lean mass uh, to the point where your competition output is going to be horrible anyway? It might be better not to even cut uh, and just you know look in the new weight class to grow into that weight class, not necessarily body fat wise, but you know skeletal muscle mass um, and preserve your lean mass over time as well. So hopefully that's helpful. But you know, last you know, I'm gonna implore you one last time is when you're looking at all these things in popular media and you hear all this madness about diets and training, don't forget. It, it's not going to be a successful strategy if you're losing lean mass, okay? And many of the fad diets that I've seen that are cutting out carbohydrates and not so many much protein, even vegan diets are promoting protein. You just got to eat a lot more of it. Um, but when you cut out these carbohydrates, you're really setting yourself up for failure, both in some disappointment when you get the carbohydrates back in because most of these diets are not sustainable because they're not realistic. Um, you know, you may be able to do something like keto for four or five, you know, months even, but then you're going to get tired of it and literally get tired, especially if you're doing high intensity exercise. If you're an ultra marathoner and your race pace is an ultra marathoner's typical race pace, 
then you might be able to get away with something like keto. But that would be one of the few exceptions I would say, other than clinical populations that may benefit from a low carbohydrate diet. We've seen a couple of those, but for the rest of us, we should be eating carbohydrates. And if you know, weight loss is the goal, absolutely should be eating carbohydrates. Um, you know, if it's the, if you need to cut some calories, that may be the last thing you go after, but you still want someone to make sure your workout quality is high. Otherwise you're just going to be smashing your face against the wall for no reason. Okay. All right. Hope you found that a uh, little bit of information about lean, la lean mass valuable. Again, subscribe to this channel if you'd like to learn more cool and interesting facts and topics related to this field. I'm releasing more videos as time goes on. Um, and if you have any video suggestions you'd like to hear more about, leave them in the comments and I'll take a look as well.